Hello, hermanos y hermanas. Bienvenidos. So today I want to talk about Halftime, the documentary on Jennifer Lopez. I just had a mother-daughter date my, where my mom came over and we watched the documentary naturally because her and I are big Jennifer Lopez fans. I mean, we've been Jennifer Lopez fans for the past 20 years easily. So um, my mom was like, I'm really behind. All my other friends have seen it. We need to watch it. So we made this happen. So as I was watching it, I was just like, this is too awesome not to talk about, whether you're a Jennifer Lopez fan or not, um, because there's just some like overall themes that I think apply in most of our lives. And the first one that came to mind um, while watching her story and everything, everything she talked about is something called the hero's journey. The hero's journey was something that Joseph Campbell came up with. Um, I feel like there probably are other people who talked about it, but I just know that Joseph Campbell, he was very big in mythology um, and his whole idea was follow your bliss. Um, that was like kind of his main Northern star, but it was after many years of research, of studying different cultures, different, um, just different stories and myths and all that stuff and religions. So anyways, um, but in the hero's journey, it's this idea of death and rebirth. And you know, that the, the documentary took you through that, everything that she had to go through. And I, I wrote down the main facets of the hero's journey. So I'll just read it to you. So one, the hero's journey. So the hero, in this case, it was Jennifer Lopez. Um, there's a sense of separation, alienation. Then, so that's step number one. Step number two is there's a call or invitation, a call to action. Like, what am I gonna do? I'm feeling shitty, but I don't know. Something is something bigger than myself is calling me to do this. Um, something inside, you know? And then step number three is a series of challenges. Step number four then is the dark night of the soul. Step number five is the integration, the crystallization of it all. And step number six is this rebirth, this return to home where you come back and you are just wiser. Um, and there's just like this integration of the wisdom. And, you know, the hero's journey, it's one of those things where it's like, there are these big hero's journeys, but like every day there may be smaller ones as well. And it's just the universality of it that we all go through it. Um, every single person has choices every single day that they have to make that they have to work with and sometimes there's just something inside yourself um that you know you have to fulfill that pushes you you know but it's hard it's a death and rebirth it's an integration of it all and it the the jennifer lopez documentary it just went through all of that it took you on jennifer lopez's journey and so i just you know asked to for myself and for you and all of us if we can honor that journey and where you are and know that as soon as maybe one ends maybe another starts and it's just like a deepening of yourself and life and to be kind to yourself and others and you know just recognize that there's many many steps within it and i just like give you a super duper watered down version of it so um the second thing that came to mind was um this book called The Artist's Way. And in that book, they talk about um, how to deal with criticism because in in the documentary, they talk about J-Lo, Jennifer Lopez, having to deal with so much criticism. I mean, she's a singer, she's an actor, she she's all these things. And she just got a lot of criticism along the way, especially from the early 2000s. Um, just I don't really know I don't think that way but like whatever there was a lot of criticism of her for silly for me there were silly things but the idea in the artist's way is how do you deal with criticism and like in the artist's way they talk about you have to learn how to separate useful criticism and useless criticism because useful criticism actually helps you because it's like oh this is a missing piece to the puzzle and useless criticism 
it just doesn't serve. And I'm going to read a portion of the artist way that talks about that. Um, and it's literally called dealing with criticism. And you can see your girl has written all over it because I am deeply studying this book. I'm actually in week three of the artist way right now. I'm doing a lot of projects, but this is like the main project I'm doing right now. So I'm in week three. Um, so anyways, I'm going to read this part to you about dealing with criticism. The author says it is important to be, wait, it is important to be able to sort useful criticism from the other kind. Often we need to do so the sorting out of ourselves without the benefit of a public vindication. As artists, we are far more able to do this sorting than people might suspect. Pointed criticism, if accurate, often gives the artist an inner sense of relief. Aha, so that's what was wrong with it. Useful criticism ultimately leaves us with one more puzzle piece of our work. So that's when we hear useful criticism. Now here's useless criticism. Useless criticism, on the other hand, leaves us with a sense of feeling, wait, leaves us with a, a feeling of being bludgeoned. As a rule, it is withering and shaming in tone, ambiguous in content, personal, inaccurate, or blanket in its condemnations. There's nothing to be gleaned from irresponsible criticism. And there's something else that I wanted to read what she said about criticism. She says, as artists, we cannot control all the criticism we will receive. We cannot make our professional critics more healthy or more loving or more constructive than they are, but we can learn to comfort our artist child over unfair criticism. We can learn to find friends with whom we can safely vent our pain. We can learn not to deny and stuff our feelings when we have been artistically savaged. Not, what time is this? Da, 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 da. Okay, so sh the the timing of your of sharing your work is very important. A first draft is seldom appropriately shown to anyone but the most gentle and discerning eye. It often takes another artist to see the embryonic work that is trying to sprout. The inexperienced or harsh critical eye, instead of nurturing the shoot of art into being, may shoot it down instead. And yeah, there's a lot of other amazing things it talks about. It just talks about being vigilant, just showing up, you will heal. Um, and a lot of times art exposes shame. And so by telling our shame secrets around our art and telling them through our art, we release ourselves and others from the darkness. This release is not always welcomed. So all the criticism she received, I'm like, how did she work through that? That is a lot. In this, in this book, they, um, the author has 10 steps of how to useful ways of how to deal with criticism. I'm not going to read it. I'll put it in the description in case you care. Um, but yeah, those are just like the two main things that I just was like in my mind while I was watching it. So this idea of the hero's journey and the universality of it and the idea of dealing with criticism. And that's a universal thing as well. And how do we navigate that? How do we come into the very moment of presence and know um, how to move with discernment? Um and just how to be okay with just getting some bruises and just growing stronger. Um, and we have to sort it out ourselves. It's an internal thing. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it, you know? And I'm just so like proud of Jennifer Lopez. She did her halftime super show, I mean, Super Bowl show. And then a year later, she performed at the White House and then she sang, um, this land belongs to you and me. Like, this land is your land. This land is my land. And, you know, I thought that was just impactful saying, like, I belong here too as a Latina woman. Um, it was just really powerful. And, oh, the last thing that, of course, I can't leave out that I was thinking of is I just, I want to just share one song I love of hers. The song, Let's Get Loud. And, like, when her daughter came out and sang that, I mean, it was just... To me, it was very strong, very impactful. And that la last year, actually for a few months, that was kind of my theme song. So if you don't know the song, I'll put it in the description, but it's really good. But it's just, it's in English, that song. And she's just, she literally says, let's get loud. So it's just is like, I've been more a background person, like more of a quiet person. Like I go to, not recently, but like I used to go to a lot of classes and stuff like that like yoga classes or whatever and I would just be quiet and I just really wouldn't talk to anybody and I would go all the time um so I would just be the background person and so just hearing JLo singing and her daughter singing you know let's get loud let's get loud and then she just talks about living life in the moment and the fullest so 
I don't know. That's a bonus. I just like that song. That's it. So anyways, if you like Jennifer Lopez, I highly, highly recommend it. It talks about her work, her tenacity, um, her silliness, and her, um, her desire really to be a storyteller, really to show up and her how she really has been finding herself and this integration of this wisdom and knowledge and how she's ready to keep on going and i hope the same for you i hope that you do the same and i do the same and that is it so from my heart to yours i am sending you l-o-v-e with an exclamation mark ciao for now